Hello, friends. Robert Bevan here, author of the Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels and short stories. With me is Sam West, and today we're going to be talking about the spell Frostbite. Burr. Chili. All right. Um, <laughs> yep. Okay. Hey, we're good. We're good. Everything's fine. <laughs> All right. Uh, now, you said this is... What, what were your exact words? This is... Like upcast uh, vicious mockery or just other Better vicious, vicious mockery? mockery? Better vicious mockery. There it is. Um, well, is that what it is? What does this do? Okay. Frostbite is an action cantrip with a range of 60 feet. Um, a creature you see within 60 feet makes a constitution saving throw. And if it fails, it takes a d6 cold damage and has a disadvantage on the next weapon attack roll it makes before the your, end of your next turn. I'm sorry, the end of its next turn. Mm. The end of somebody's turn. It's next turn. It's next turn. Definitely it's. Right. Um, and then he gets D6 damage whenever it ups. Whenever you get 5th, ninth, 11, all that garbage. It's a cantrip. It's a cantrip scaling. Um, Vicious Mockery, uh, for those checking the notes, uh, has a is a first level cantrip. Or is a cantrip. One action to cast. 60 foot range. Okay, we're one for one at the moment. Um, you pick someone within range. That target makes a wisdom saving throw. And Whoa. if they fail, they take a D4 psychic damage and have disadvantage on the next attack roll they make until the end of its next turn. So they're almost identical words. The difference is Vicious Mockery affects any kind of attack, and Frostbite only affects weapon attacks, which there are mostly weapon attacks. If we're talking about attacks being made, uh, spell attack rolls are the other option. Uh, and unless you're against specifically a caster... Uh, frostbite is just going to be better than this. What about um, unarmed attacks? Does those they are count? considered weapon attacks. Are they? Hmm. Mm -hmm. Unarmed strikes are considered weapon attack rolls. Um, basically, if if it's using its claws, teeth, whatever, it's a weapon attack roll. Um, also, things that can't hear are unaffected by vicious mockery, where nothing is ever unaffected by frostbite. So that's strict upside. Um, at the end of the day, I think frostbite is a great spell. I think that it's the kind of spell that if you have the option to take it, you probably should think about it. Like if you want one damage in cantrip that also affects the flow of battle, Frostbite's definitely it because that's what I would recommend every bard take Vicious Mockery for. Uh, at the same time, I'm a little bummed out because now Druids, Sorcerers, Warlocks, Wizards, and Artificers all can be doing what bards were kind of like exclusively doing. And I think that's kind of lame because I think it makes everyone kind of feel more samey, but that's just old man shouting at d d That's not really a, like an actual super relevant critique i don't think well uh on the plus side for uh vicious mockery you make your attack by like talking about the creature's mom it's way more fun yeah undeniably vicious mockery it i think vicious mockery is probably one of the spells at the most times where i'm like okay what do you say whenever you viciously mm -hmm. mock this person and having that fun little role play moment of just having someone send off a series of really crap insults because this was off the top of the player's head at the moment. And you get like, I don't like your shoes. They squeak too much. And that's what gives them a D4 psychic damage. And then getting the fun element as a DM to be like, yeah, it misses the next attack roll because it's really self-conscious about its shoes now. That's just fun. That's good old fashioned storytelling. And well, shame, like shame on that player. For having vicious mockery available and not having a list of insults ready to go, yeah, you got to dig go go Shakespearean on it. Just go real deep. Find some exceptional anecdotes about their jawline and uh, not anecdote um, insults about their jawline and stuff like that. Like I, you can definitely dig deep and find some truly biting uh, remarks to make about people if you want to. But we're not talking about vicious mockery. We're talking no. about frostbite. And because of I think what just transpired between us should go to highlight why I kind of have a problem with Frostbite um, in that, like, Vicious Mockery is just so much more fun, and this is mechanically more or less strictly better, and that's kind of shitty. I don't think it's... I, I want there to be a good reason to cast Vicious Mockery and not feel like, oh, I'm just doing a worse thing than what the Druid's doing. Um, well, to be I, fair, and uh, Frostbite's credit, you can talk about somebody's mother while you cast it. Yes. It's not what makes them have disadvantage on their next attack roll, but no. yes, you can. It's the gripping chill of cold, which, I mean, yeah, we only have one of those, just Ray of Frost, but, like, I I, I talked about this whenever I wrote about Mind Sliver, and talked about Mind Sliver, where I'm, I like that these effects exist, 
because I think it is good that the casters can feel like they always have something to do, and even if it's not the most damage, it feels impactful in the fight. And disadvantage on a single attack roll doesn't always feel that impactful, but it's something that you'll sometimes notice, and that'll almost happen, always happen whenever you'll roll two C2 dice, the first one's a 20, and the second one's like a 6, and you'll be like, oh my god, you saved my life. And that's a pretty fun moment to have that these spells can offer. It's not most of the time, most of the time it's like a 13 and a 16, it doesn't change the outcome or whatever, but it's a fine effect to have. All right, let I me... Just, well, go ahead. Uh, uh, all right, I was going to pose this argument. Um, again, for Vicious Mockery versus Frostbite. Okay. Con save versus Wisdom save. Doesn't matter. It might, though. I mean, think about it. If you're fighting creatures with big con saves, yeah, you they're, they're going to be the tougher ones. And there's yes. probably going to be more of them. Um, ooh, I don't necessarily agree with that. Um, I think that who monsters puts, and who puts their high stats into wisdom? Uh, smarter <laughs> enemies, right? Yeah. Like wiser enemies. Yes. Um, I so he, I he, whenever it comes to justifying power based off of save type, I really struggle with it. And the reason I really struggle with it is because whenever you're fighting lower CR monsters, you're looking in negatives for their bad stats. So you're kidding almost always. And their good stats cap out around a plus two. And the difference between like a plus one, plus two, and a plus zero is very small whenever it comes to actual feel in game of an effect occurring. So Frostbite using a con save against things that have a 10, 11, or 12 constitution versus something that has a 10, 11, or 12 wisdom, the actual bar difference between those two save results is like a 5% difference. Sometimes it's a 10% difference, which seems like it's large, but it's only happening six, seven times a game before mm. it's being never cast again because upper level magic's available, right? right. Um, so in the small window of time where it's going to happen, it it doesn't have that noticeable or meaningful of an impact, at least one that is so large, in fact, that you should consider them meritable against each other, specifically because there are monsters that have higher whiz than they have con. There are monsters that have way higher con than whiz. And it may be something you consider whenever it's like, oh, I'm looking at a fat hill giant with his con of 24. All right, we're going to put Frostbike in the back pocket and make fun of it instead. That is a decision you can make. But it it isn't something that goes into the deciding of should I take this cantrip over a different cantrip, nor should I think it'd be a factor in damage dice size, which has a, the difference between a D four and D six because they're both the lower end scale is smaller than like the difference between like a D twelve and a D ten, D twelve, D eight kind of stuff. But like it is, it's still fairly moot, uh, and I don't think I think people blow it out of proportion to be like, oh, way more things have con, not enough things have that much more con that it's even worth talking about for the amount of things that get hit by it in my opinion yeah but like i said the hill giant still something good to keep in mind yes when deciding whether or not to cast it yes it's definitely something that don't consider it whenever you're considering taking the spell consider it whenever you're contemplating casting it yeah i think a good way to think about it and that's again it, it shouldn't change if you take vicious mockery or not no or in this case frostbite um, another nice thing about this is that this is a druid cantrip, and I think the druids were a little bit pressed for decent cantrips. They had Shillelagh, they had uh, Thorn Whip, and those are two fairly unique spells that have some neat implications and or not implications, applications. Um, but they were both like comparably worse, I think, than most of the wizard damaging cantrips. But again, all the damaging cantrips are kind of bad. So Frostbite being on that list is like it's a slight upgrade. Sure, it's nice. Uh, support druids get to feel a lot better in the early tier, um, whereas right now you just cast and tangle and hope for the best, um, which isn't amazing, but it's what you do. How how powerful do you think the effect is? You know, getting disadvantage on essentially one attack roll. So um, there are a lot of different ways to conceptualize disadvantage. I think the thing that stands out to me about it in the current edition to D&D, &D, and this is something they're changing in the next version, is currently monsters can crit. Um, and oftentimes the difference between a character living and dying is whether or not it gets crit. And mm -hmm. this, a creature that is frostbitten or viciously mocked, basically no longer can crit because it goes from having a uh, 1 in 20 chance to a 1 in 400 chance of being able to crit. And that is, I think, the biggest impact of disadvantage in this instance. I think whenever you're casting this in the lowest tier, it is a pretty concise way to say that's not critting on the next attack, which means you can be safe in the assumption that you're not going to take 30 damage, you're going to take 15 damage should it get hit at all, right? Mm. Um, plus, it also reduces the instances of you taking the 15 damage by some marginal percentage. Right. Uh, I think where it'll stand out the most is whenever you'll notice that would have hit but instead missed, 
that's not going to be most of the time. Most of the time it's just going to miss or it's just going to hit regardless of the disadvantage because it's like a plus three difference on mm-hmm. average, right? Um, but whenever you do notice the hit or misses, it will feel good. And that is, I think, a well-balanced mechanic. This is something that affects numerical outcomes in a way that is tangible whenever it does occur. And it has such a low cost that it's really... A D doing a D6 damage is just fine. It's not that much worse than doing a D8 or a D10. It's enough. You're doing damage, and then you are attaching that to a condition that is sometimes very useful. All of those things coalesce to make it think that they make me think that it's a great condition to have on cantrips. I think that's why they printed Frostbrite, to be perfectly honest. Is they're like, this is something that fits really well with cantrips. This is something we like with the bards doing the witch's mockery with. We want more parties to have access to this mechanic because it smooths out the early game a lot. Whenever you don't have to worry about your bard randomly dying if a single goblin gets a single crit the first round of combat. This will be it, it. It makes the the DM pressure and the balancing of the counters way easier by again changing the one in twenty games are going to have a one shot bar to a one in four hundred games are going to have a one shot bar. All right, you got a score for this one. Uh, I think this is a yeah. This is also a four. It's where Bishop's Mockery is at, right? It's a yeah. great little counter to have. It's very usable even in the upper tiers. If you're like, we really can't afford that to hit the paladin viciously, mock it or in this case, frostbite it. Um, and that can be a usable feature for it. Being able to cast damage and counter for the upper tier is a ring endorsement, frankly. And in the lower tiers, this is just, it's almost always going to be a go-to for people looking for a damage and counter that also supports the bar. I don't remember what, I, oh wait, we haven't done Vicious Mockery yet. Uh, all right, I'm going to give that one a five, so I'm going to give this one a four. Because it's not as much <laughs> I, fun. I agree with that sentiment. <laughs> Spoiler alert! <laughs> All right, that was vision. No, that was uh, that. We talked a lot about everyone. Mockery, I guess. Yeah, we did, and we shall again. Yes. All right, that was frostbite. Thank you, Sam, and thank you, everyone, for listening and watching. We'll see you next time. Bye bye. Thank you for watching. If you found this helpful, informative, or entertaining, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button below. You needn't smash it; a gentle tap will suffice. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel. And make sure you check out the links in the description where you'll find my Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels, Sam's full review of the spell, and other fun things.